Hello and welcome friends, it's time, it's fucking time for Civilization 6. Uh, probably the biggest release I've been waiting for this year in PC gaming, by far. And that is including Dark Souls 3. I haven't really been looking forward to this, muchly over more than uh, Battlefield and the under like. I have to say, the intro sequence is fucking amazing. Um, it won't be in this video because it's before I started recording, but it is on YouTube, so I highly suggest checking it out. And the music so far is amazing. A lot better than Civilization V. Now, um, I set the game's graphics on full settings. Everything is set to max, as you guys can see. I'm using a GTX 970 uh, on an i5-2500K. Now, Historically, Civilization games have always been quite a lot more heavy on processing power than GPU power. And this seems also to be the case in the latest iteration of the series, which is a good thing. Which means people like me with not the latest, latest, latest and greatest PCs can still play the game. But enough talking, let's get into it. So, this is a first impressions video, as always, and I haven't tried out the game itself, so just ran the benchmark to see how it runs and everything. Really nice feature to add, by the way. So I'm going to do the tutorial. Even though I did play Civilization 5, but it was years ago, so I'm going to be super rusty. So I need a refresher. Let's let's get on to the tutorial. Um, to note, if you have loading issues in the game, just uh, exclude the game in your Windows Defender or your antivirus. Seems to make quite a bit of difference. I had a few issues um, with loading times before I did that. Here our people stand, their destinies unwritten. Will they push forward into greatness? Or see themselves lost to the ages? Their fate lies in your hands. Now, I don't want to brag, I was pretty decent at Civilization 5 against AI and computers, but I am better at um, turn-based strategy games than I am in real-time strategy games. I'm not really good at those. But this is tutorial. Let's choose which leader we want to be. Do we want to be Cleopatra of the Egyptian Empire, who's a civilization of strong allies and great city builders? Or do we want to be Gilgamesh of the Sumerian Empire, the original hero? rules vast lands and is a respected conqueror. Hmm. I kind of I kind of want to be Gilgamesh, but I also kind of want to be Cleopatra. Uh, let's go with Gilgamesh. It's just a tutorial, eh? From the first stirrings of life beneath water to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to um. man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this a war card is our unique land unit. <laughs> the stars. Much rests upon your shoulders, King Gilgamesh. Your own people, and many people of the world, look to you as a leader. But you are more than a mere man, and the weight of the world will never cause you to waver. Checking out the features and abilities, it does seem that Gilgamesh is the one to choose if you want to go out to war, though I haven't seen any of the other leaders yet. For there will be many vying for a piece of your strength. Venture forth, for it is time to begin your epic tale. Oh yes, this beginning is so good. Let's begin, guys. Bam. Our people's fate lies in your hands. Okay. Great is the responsibility placed upon you. Perhaps I may be of service. Sure. Um, slave. For too long we have roamed this world without a land to call our own. It is time we put down roots. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I'm, I'm selecting a settler. Our brave settlers await your command. We should found our first city here. Okay. We will found a fit a city. From the seeds of the Uruk. city shall you grow an empire. But to truly thrive. We must first see to the needs of our people. Yeah, I better open a brothel, don't, shouldn't I, eh? And a bar. 
we need a few bars, I'm pretty certain of that. The city is the cornerstone of any great civilization. A city's size is represented by its population, indicated to the left of its nameplate. We have 13 people in Uruk. Each city also claims the surrounding lands for your exclusive control. These lands are indicated by the colored border surrounding the city. The unique features within your borders will have profound influence on the potential strengths of each city. Though small now, our city will continue to grow if Oh you look, it's a fucking kraken! Its fate and that of our people depend upon you. Okay. Poor people. You must choose how each city in your civilization is to grow and expand over time, improving the land you control and creating new buildi buildings and district districts within your borders. Now, in Civilization Faith. Faith. <laughs> what the fuck, Rian? I like how she's so relaxed. But this is a game that takes a lot of time. Really, it does take a lot of time. So, this is not a quick, quick, quick game unless you play a bit and then save and then continue on a bit later. This is a game that takes a lot of time. And interesting enough, it seems... Well, there's possible rumors that are making around that Civilization VI might be an eSports game. But we'll see how that goes, eh? Now, in Civilization V, I preferred going for... I tried all the different ways to win, and I really enjoyed the whole um, sending your people to space to colonize on a different planet kind of end. That was the science end, I think. That was really nice to go for, if I remember correctly. Each city generates a variety of yields at the start of every turn. These are obtained from the hexes to city controls. Each hex within your city borders can provide a number of yields to help you advance your civilization. Food and production are two of these yields. Food fuels city growth. Increasing its population. More food, food faster growth. More feud! I'm, I'm totally in a warm mood, you can hear me. Feud, not food. Uh, I don't know why I'm pronouncing food as feud. Anyway, production is used to build new items, like military units and city upgrades. The more production your cycle your city has, the faster you can build things. However, each hex will need to be worked on by a population in order to obtain the yield from that hex. Each citizen can work one hex within your borders. We are blessed to have such bountiful lands within our borders. Still, a civilization is comprised of people, not just Earth. Good, uh, good, uh, good words, Nave. Growing your city's population is very important to order to take advantage of all the yields from the surrounding lands. Such lands will surely draw the attention of the barbarian raiders plaguing this barbarian area. Barbarian raiders. We must prepare to fight back if we are to survive. I, I kind of wanted the advisor to have a, a Scottish lass accent. I think that would have been fucking epic. Though, Our city requires warriors. I'm not sure that would fit in with the whole Sumerian theme. Then again, she's speaking English and not Sumerian. And I'm pretty sure English in its current form didn't exist back then. I'm choosing production. If our people are to survive in these lands, we must focus their efforts. Only then can we master this world. Okay. Well, I want warriors, don't I? Yes. Our people's protection is our utmost concern. Direct your city towards the creation of a warrior. Yes, ma'am. One warrior. Training has commenced. Already our people feel more secure. That's that's pretty good. Our empire will not be built overnight. We have accomplished all we can this day. <laughs> oh, did we now? Civilization is a turn-based game, you say? Well, I'm going to end... You know, building items takes time. Now, that is true. So, everything you do, you can quietly plan ahead, see what's going on, check out the map. You know, you have a turn to do everything as much as possible. And there's no time limit on that turn. And do spend your turns wisely. But I have to say, one thing about the game, it quickly eats up time. I mean, you can be st just calmly playing around and just just the next turn goes into the next turn into the next turn but if we are to be more than the barbarian tribes we defend against we must explore other areas of development like science and the science that doesn't include black magic that involves cursing people to send lightning to them her 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 hashtag science must fall 
choosing research. There are those among us with minds adept and unlocking the world's secrets. We need only guide them. Sadly, I'm not one of them. Um, I want... Yes, we want mining. I don't get a choice Excellent. in this because it's a tutorial. As our people's understanding tutorial. of the earth increases, so too will our ability to harness its riches and increase our production capabilities. We must give them time to do their work. Thank you, advisor lady. Yes, um, just as building new units is fueled by production, researching new technologies is fueled by science. And science must fall. Hashtag. Each city in Emperor generates a small amount of science. Science per turn. How quickly your research projects are completed is determined by a total of all science generated by cities. The more science you generate, the faster you search new technologies. End of another turn. Barbarian raiders approach our city. Oh, this is not good. Too prize a target for them to ignore. That's pretty interesting English. Okay. We cannot allow these savages to pillage and destroy all we have built. Mm -hmm. Our warriors have completed their training. Let us commit them to battle. Okay. Thank you. I'm selecting my warrior. Are the blade with which we will strike down our enemy. We wow, this is pretty cool. To guide them. Pretty cool icon thingy. Oh yeah, I can zoom in. Completely forgot about it. And I uh, think... No. Yeah. That's uh do not click off the screen, eh? You have to click off your middle mouse button to move around. It's a bit of an annoyance, but no, no worries. Um I want you to move to here. Now the warriors will automatically attack what's ever there. And uh that was glorious. The barbarians have learned we are not a people to be trifled with. Yes, we are Still, not. They will return. And next time I fear they will not take us so lightly. Yeah, they only sent one guy. Maybe they'll send two next time. We should take advantage of this lull in hostilities. With our warriors now prepared, we may focus our production capabilities towards the city itself. Okay, show me how, game. Choose production. Yes, I'm choosing production. The land and surrounding our city are fertile. Mm -hmm. Yet as of now, they lie undeveloped. Yes. We must create a workforce if we are to make the most of the resources. Oh, so we need a builder. Excellent. The skills these builders will attain will dramatically improve our civilization. I like how they're like really dramatic, <laughs> like really hyping out what each unit can do. It's like this builder will completely make everything more awesome. And these warriors will protect us and make us feel more secure. But we also need bakers, because everyone likes pie. That's such a cool uh, thing to add. And I'm kind of worried that this video is going to be a bit long. But in your hand, hand, this game is a bit long, so I think that's fine with you guys. Yes, yes no, maybe. If it's longer than 20 minutes. Life within our borders, we must not ignore the lands beyond them. The only way to truly master this world is to understand it. Well, then I'm fucked. Pretty much. Beyond combat, our warriors make for ideal explorers in this uncertain and hostile world. You need only give the word, and they shall set forth into the unknown. Well, that's good. I'm going to set them to uh, a moving range of two. On foot, the wildlands take a heavy toll on our troops. Perhaps there is a smoother path. Um, like a road. Open terrain, like plains and grassland, only consume one movement point. Whereas more difficult terrain, like woods and hills, will contain two. And you can build um, roads later on in the game, just by the way, between cities. Will we attack the tribal village? Will we pillage it? Will we say mean things to their women and children? Because, well, it's still 3820 BC. So I think raping and pillaging is still still, still on the menu. Don't think um, feminism is a thing yet, <laughs> you know. This people seem different from the barbarian tribes we encountered. 
Oh, Perhaps that's good. We should make contact instead of combat. Good, good. Um, we uh, s end our turn. Our warriors stand before the village gates. They await your command to enter. I think what I'll do is that uh, after our uh, interaction with this uh, here village here, I will end the video right there. Um, I have to admit, or I have to say, that thanks to the awesome people at gamesplant.uk for giving me the opportunity to show you guys the game, as always. Link will be in the description for you guys where you guys can check it out. It would seem friendship has its rewards. And um, success against the it is a referral link, so if you do buy the game or any other game via that link on Gamesplant.com, I also get a small percentage um, of the sales money the on my wallet in Gamesplant to help me buy new games. Like, um, I don't know, Battlefield 1, for example. Though I'm kind of iffy on that one, seeing as there's no local service for it. Yes, we have a skilled in the ways of combat. This truck We should employ the Yes. Um Okay, so I can get the scouts to to move and it has a lot more movement as you guys can see. I think it has three movement thingies. Huh, that's a lot more movement. But yeah, I'm ending this video right there. Let me know what you guys think of the game in the comment section below. I'll probably... This tutorial is probably going to take fucking hours. Because that's just how this game works. It, it always takes hours. Nothing happens quickly in this game. But that's kind of the joy of it. That's kind of the fun thing. That's the thing that always attracts me to civilization games in general. Same with Stellaris, it's it's a real-time strategy game, not a turn-based one, but it's also kind of fun. It also eats up hours and hours and hours every time. Though with Stellaris, playthroughs get a bit samey, whereas in Civilization VI, you can always try new things, and that's a good thing in my eyes. Anyways, I'll see you guys again next time. Bye-bye.